not going to do a major involved video. I figured this will be a good chance to show you my makeup inventory and how I keep all of my makeup organized. Uh, if you're one of those people who has a lot of makeup or find that you are buying duplicates of shades because you can't remember what you have, hopefully this will be helpful for you. Okay, so my makeup inventory was made with Microsoft Excel 13, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and open Excel and open my file. I think I already have it open down here. There we go. And as you can see, it's quite long with over 300 rows, uh, mainly because I have a lot of eyeshadow and lip gloss. Uh, so going back up to the top, as you can see in column A, row 1, I've put my product type or category, such as foundation, lipstick, and eyeliner, etc., and I think I have it um, kind of in order of how I apply it, not 100%, but close, I think. And you can put this in any order that works for you, um, alphabetically, um, by location, on the face, such as eyes, lips, or in the order that you apply it, whatever makes sense for you. And moving over here to column B, I have the brands of each product, like Benefit, NYX, whatever. Uh, and in column C... I have the product name, so you know the actual name of the product, what it's called. And then over here in column D, I have the shade name or number if applicable. Uh, some products have a name and a number, then I just put both of them if I think that's important information. Um, and a lot of companies like to you know reformulate and discontinue stuff, so I like to have you know as much information as possible if I'm looking for a product. Then in column E, I have the quantity of each item listed. Uh, now most of these are one for me but there are times when I've accidentally bought uh, another of something because I forgot I had that shade which is one of the main reasons I made this inventory in the first place so it still just helps um, me to keep track of everything so going down to show you an example on let's see row 56 you can see right here um, if you look at row 56, the category over here is Liquid Blush. Um, the brand name is ELF. The product name is Studio HD Blush. And this is in the shade Encore. And I own one of them. Uh, now if you go back up a little ways, you'll see that I have one row highlighted in yellow. I got a little mixed up when I was depotting and forgot to label a product. Um, and I'm only about 90% sure if this uh, blush right here is actually in the shade Madly and not something else. So I highlighted this one item to let me know that something is you know, really wrong and I'm not 100% sure that the shade information is accurate. And the way I have this organized, like I said, the product types aren't really in that much of an order over here in column A. However, within the category types, I do have the brand names in alphabetical order. For example, going down and looking at the category of loose powder. Let me see if I remember where I put that. There we go. So looking at the loose powder category... Um, if you can see, within this loose powder category, at first I have Bare Minerals for B. Then I have um, Clinique Nix listed next, because it starts with C. Then on to Elf, MAC, Makeup Forever, Palladio, and then Tarte. So these are all in alphabetical order. Also, within each brand's name, each product title is also in alphabetical order. So now we're going to go down and look at the lip glosses if I don't pass it. Here we go. And I did notice where I kind of screwed up with this in some places and I'm going to go back and fix it but I'll show you a part where I didn't mess it up. Um, so if we look in lip glosses and we go into the MAC category. So MAC you know, starts with M so I have all the lip gloss brands in order alphabetically. Um, then within the MAC brands each product name is listed alphabetically. So if we look at MAC, first we have Cream Sheen Glass, then Dazzle Glass, Lip Glass, and then Luster Glass. So all those are in alphabetical order. The product names and numbers work the same exact way over here in column D. 
uh, within each brand and product title. Different shades within the same product are also in you know, alpha numeric order, or at least they're going to be after I go back and fix it. Um, and you don't have to put everything in alphabetical order. I feel like at least having the same brands lumped together is helpful. Like, don't list two e.l.f. blushes and then another NARS, then an e.l.f., then an Illamasqua. You know, keep all the brands at least together, even if they're not in alphabetical order. And if you notice, some cells have these little lines in them. Let me go back up and get one. Some of these, you know, little lines right here. Um, sometimes a piece of information is not applicable. Um, for example, looking at this row 23 with this Makeup Forever Loose Powder. Um, it's just called HD um, Setting Powder or High Definition Powder. And that's the name of it. There's no shade name for this product. Unless you really wanted to go back in over here and you know type in white to remind yourself that it's not a translucent powder. So these little lines right here in these cells tell me that there's no information for that item because if I just see a blank cell with nothing in it then that's telling me that I've forgotten or left out a piece of information and I need to go back and add it and the lines you know keep me organized and help me tell the difference between something that I have accidentally left out and something I left out on purpose. If you also notice some product types have an asterisk next to them um, and this means to me that it is a sample size. So like up here, there's a highlighter on row 62 that has an asterisk next to it, if you can see on the far left. And like I said, this tells me that I have a sample size of this product, you know, mainly the types that come in the foils or packets, um, but not necessarily though. And this is telling me that I don't have the full size product and you know just a small sample of it and if you go down to the lipsticks you can see that the majority of my lipsticks over here in column A have that little asterisk next to it I won a Z palette contest uh, a few years ago and the palette came a bunch with a bunch of those small circle pans with melted lipstick so I just included those as samples um, so that's how I organize my inventory um, every single time I get a new makeup item whether it's one item you know or a huge haul I don't put it in my drawers and mix it with my other makeup until I've added it to my inventory and also down here I have a separate tab for brushes but I haven't really gotten to you know filling that out yet I think I wrote it down on a piece of paper but I'm gonna go back and add it to my document later uh, if you're not as familiar with Excel and you want to know how to get all the little lines and boxes for everything, I'll show you how to do that really quickly. Um, first, I'm going to type a few things in just as an example. I'm going to type in a couple of you know lipsticks and then like an Urban Decay foundation. Make this bigger. So to get these thinner boxes that are around every single cell, I'll first highlight everything. Then I'm going to go up to the top and see this little square that is divided into fourths. And I'm going to click the arrow for the drop down menu and I'm going to click all borders. And this puts borders around every cell that I selected. And also I have these thicker lines, as you can see, around each product type, separating the different types of products. So you're going to highlight, you know, say I want to do lipsticks in one box. Go back up to this same square up here, drop down menu, and you're going to go down to where it says thick box border and click it. And then we can do the same for the foundation. Click it and it adds the thicker lines around um, the product type. And if you get a new makeup product and you want to add it, you can add rows anywhere in here. So let's say I wanted to add a new foundation I got. I'm going to go over to the far left where all the numbers are for the rows. And you'll pick a row. So let's say I want to add one 
right here, row 221. And if you see, if you hover over it, there is a right facing arrow. And you are going to right click, go down to this menu and click insert. And this will insert a new row above whatever um, row number you selected. So keep that in mind whenever you're placing new rows. And I'm just going to go up and undo that. And you can also print this out. Landscape mode is going to work best. And I like to keep a hard copy even if I'm updating it. I can also just write any changes on the hard copy. Um, if I get a new item, then go back and add it to my document in Excel later. You know, if I don't feel like getting out my laptop and adding it right then. Um, and if you need any information about this, please let me know. I'm going to see if I can try to make a printable version or like a little template that you can go in and fill in whatever you need. So I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any more questions and I'll see you next time. Bye. So for example, I'm going to go back up to the top and I got a new foundation. Oh, I deleted my foundation. Oh no, where did my foundations on here go? Are you serious? Are they missing? You've got to be kidding me. Uh oh, that's really not good. Oh, that's not good. Where in the world did I mess that up? Um. See, why is this not in the right place? Oh, that's really weird. Why is it doing this? Did I miss this document up? Uh, well, that's really bad.